The first team I'm going to introduce you to is Tim and Lori O'Rourke. Uh, I think you all know Tim and Lori. Uh, Lori, of course, runs our commission. Tim has been a fantastic agent, and uh, Lori works with him in retention, and they've done an unbelievable job. As we go back and look through the numbers in terms of retention, they are some of the best retaining agents within Tolaris, and there's a reason for that. It doesn't happen by chance. Uh, the reason is they have a system set up. The way they manage their customers, they keep them around for a long time. And as we've talked about before, as you all know, when it comes to residual income, if you can keep your customers around forever, you don't have to sell anything anymore. Of course, that's uh, not very likely. Uh, customers will go away, customers go out of business, but you'll be able to grow uh, much larger as you do keep them for a longer period of time. And that's what we do when we retain. And uh, I'm going to turn the time over to uh, Tim and to Lori to talk about how they structure their business, how they work with their customers, and uh, really uh, open you up to why they have some of the best retention uh, of all the stages. Tim and Lori. Thanks, Hi, hey, everyone. Uh, this is kind of strange for me talking on a microphone. Mike back there said, just hold up like a telephone, Tim. <laughs> See if this works any better. <laughs> hey, um, there's, there's lots that we can talk about here with our uh, specific business and the way we do things. But um, specifically, we've been asked to talk about customer retention. And just to give you a little bit of history of where this comes about, about two years ago, a little bit more than two years ago, we were sitting here looking at our business saying, we've kind of hit a glass ceiling here. I spent, it was pretty much just me on the business side and working with clients. Uh, you know, consulting with them, making solutions and selling the solutions, and supporting the customer. But and Lori has always, ever since we've been uh, within the agency realm here, Lori has always done the anything related to money, anything related to <laughs> so amen to that. I, I turned her point out of accounting in uh, college. <laughs> Um, so anyways, what we decided to do is, uh, I actually flew out uh, it, uh, when, when Lance lived in Chicago and consulted with him a little bit, you know, getting some ideas, thank you Lance, and uh, Adam and Patrick of course, and some other folks, this was before uh, James was my channel manager, but uh, we came up with some ideas, you know, what do we need to do in order to get past this level in the world of business? So, um, obviously that, that gets into, um, and, Okay. Okay. That obviously gets into admin, but specifically what we're talking about here is retention of customers. So what I needed to do is I needed to clear my schedule where I could focus on new business. I could focus on consulting with new clients and even existing clients, but I needed somebody to make sure that my existing base over here was staying stable. These customers are happy. We're continuing to grow these customers, so that's where Lori comes into place. Um, so here on the, on the slide here, obviously we, we talked a little bit about consultation. And, and by the way, before I get into that, the numbers, and go ahead and share, you can share some of the numbers if you'd like. The numbers are just unbelievable. This last year, we look at the numbers for retention and actually farming an existing customer base and compared to brand new sales of, of relationships that we don't already have. And the numbers are phenomenal, I'm here to tell you. So, obviously, uh, consultation to build a trusting relationship during the sales process, as well as you know, during the contracting process, and then actually getting into provisioning and keeping in contact with the client. Making sure that they feel comfortable, and they know that you're knowledgeable, and you're looking out for their best interests. Um, so what we did here in this process is when I sell a service to a client, whether it's a new client or an existing client, what we what I do is I send out an email to that client. Generally, it's about a week after the uh, the, the order is placed, and it just is basically uh, well, thank you again for your business, and we appreciate your business. By the way, I want to introduce you to my customer support specialist Lori, who will be contacting you with, within the next couple of weeks. So that goes out to them, and they're expecting Lori's call. So when Lori does call, they know exactly who she is and why she's calling, and then she establishes that relationship and strengthens that relationship. So I'm going to hand it over to Lori here, and she can, uh, Lori's kind of my secret sauce here. <laughs> we already do <knew> that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never talked to one of these mics, but after hearing Tim talking it and hearing all about his voices, I want to take it home, because he can't hear me most of the time. And if I have a mic, then I can talk real loud. <laughs> 
So, uh, like Tim said, he sends out a thank you to any um, customer that comes on board, whether it's a new customer or an existing customer. We thank everybody for their renewal, for their new service, or just a new relationship. And once he does that, he creates a task for me, which he neglected to, to mention there, but he creates a task for myself, and he sets it out a couple of weeks later. And once I see that task, I now know that I need to reach out to this customer, introduce myself, and when I do that, I just give them a description of who I am and what I do and what my services are for them. I let them know uh, how to reach me, why to reach me. And I do this with every contact within that company. Even though I may not reach those people in the future, if there's three or four different people that he spoke to during the time, maybe an IT person, uh, the owner, a bar partner, I talk with every single one of them. If a bar partner's involved, I reach to them first so I can create a relationship with the bar partner and make sure I can talk to them. On their, you know, on their tips we have also. So that way I can start a relationship with the bar partner too. So I send out, or I, I call each one of these people, introduce myself, and then I just follow up with a real simple email. Just thank you for your time on the telephone today and provide all my contact information. And it's as simple as that. In that conversation, nine times out of ten, I learned a lot more about the customer than Tim knew on the personal side. So I'm able to um, maybe make a couple notes about their, their kids or their recent trip, and every time I talk to them, our personal relationship grows much deeper. Um, so again, what I do when I speak with the customers is my whole focus is just to strengthen that relationship for Tim. So he doesn't have to work so hard to get all the new sales. We want to keep our base and continue to grow that base. So that, that's my goal, is just to create the personal side of the relationship. He has the business side of the relationship, and I have the personal side of the relationship. So that's what we try to attempt to do. And when, uh, what I do is I reach out to these people every two to three months. Um, I call them, depending on their services, how many sites they have, their potential. Uh, and how often they want me to call them. Some people just say, hey, I'm doing great, keep me an email next time. And that's fantastic, I just do what they ask me to do. But I reach them about every two to three um, months just to say hi. Um, most of the time, these conversations are 30 seconds. Just, you know, hey, how you doing? How's everything working for you? It's great, you know, thanks so much for your call. And that's it. Um, we always know when I call customers and they, they don't answer the phone, Tim knows because within a day, he usually gets a phone call from the customer saying, oh, Lori triggered my memory, I need a, I need a new circuit. So we always know that they, they get my messages and they know what we're doing. Um, I also follow up with the new goals. Uh, that's been the key for us, Tim mentioned numbers. And I can't remember, Adam, you might you know, off the top of your head, I think this year for our numbers we had a, about 80% of our total was renewals and farming of the existing base. So of, uh, of total dollars, um, we had very, very few new customers come in, which really bothered me until Adam made me feel better by it. Like, you know, it's more important to keep that existing base in place. But I send out the renewals uh, about two months beforehand. Uh, if I see a renewal coming up, I call the customer and I let them know. You know, you have a renewal coming up, we've got some options. What would you like to do? Are you happy with your, your existing um, service? Is there changes in your business that we need to focus on? And anytime that happens, I just pass that call right over to Tim. So a lot of times they say, no, it's perfect. Send me the contract renewal. We do it, we're done. Um, you know, many times people need a, an additional service, they need to bump their bandwidth, um, they want to look at integrated access or ethernet, something different. I just walk over to Tim's office and hand him my phone and, and that's it. Um, I don't know anything on the technical side and I don't want to know anything on the technical side. So that's why it works so well just to hand that right back and we keep our, our rules completely separate at that point. Um, We're real high tech with our phone system, she walks in my office. <laughs> <laughs> And as Mark earlier pointed out, there's more to be there. <laughs> yeah, or Skype. That is, uh, you know, many people have asked us how we work together as far as our um, tasks. How do we stay on the task where I can assign something to Tim or he can assign it back to me. And the most technical way we figured out is Skype it really works because I don't know if Tim texts his tasks very often, so I just Skype him instead. So whatever works is how you need to run your business. <laughs> this is what works for us, but you know, take the theory and run with it for you. Um, what I do with the customers, I, I simply assist them with their billing and circuit issues. People will call me to tell me their circuits are down, and I'll call it in for them so they don't have to worry about it. Or they have a problem with their billing, and I take care of them. Well. So it's really just somebody for them to kind of do their grunt work that they don't want to do, but they really appreciate everything I do for them. So it's made the relationship strong. And then the last part of it is just growing those existing relationships to get more business out of it. And every time I talk to somebody, I ask them for opportunities. Do you have any other sites, any other services I can support you on? Where do you have your voice lines at? Uh, I just ask them simple questions like that. And I ask them for the referrals. Um, the greatest compliment I think anybody can give you is a referral. And you know, I make 
interior and ask them for their referrals and ask them if I can do anything better to help assist them or to make them want to refer me to their colleagues. Um, we do get quite a few referrals coming in and a lot of times it's from the same, same people referring you and we like to thank those people. So if we do get a referral, Tim usually picks up the phone at that point and calls those people up and just thanks them for their trust and, and appreciation of that referral. Um, as opportunities arise, I, I'll price the easy ones, like a, a T1 or a mono T1, but everything else, I just kick right back to Tim's. Uh, I know that's something that you know many people have asked is, is how much technical, or you know, the technology side, how far do I go? I don't. I don't go at all. I don't want to. And that's Tim's expertise. So I just, I'm just there to kind of be a friend and to create that relationship. And that's what's worked really well for us. And every time I need something, I just walk to my tips that I walk in and I, I hand them the phone and here you go. So uh, they, it, it works real well for us. One of the common threads here is obviously the task manager. The task manager works very, very well for us. We found a way to use it where things don't fall between the cracks. So again, this is, this is our business model. Um, you know, whatever bits and pieces each of you may take away from it, that's the whole purpose for us being up here. Um, one question I want to ask the group though, I, I was in this boat, that's the reason I want to ask this group. How many of you have an aging customer base that you might be a little leery about reaching out to that client to renew them? Just because you haven't contacted them frequently. Quite a few. Yeah, I, I, I'm here to tell you, do it. Just pick up the phone because the difference that we make here as agents, as good agents, is the communication that we have with our the, for as long as they're a client of ours. So, you know, from the direct side, the directs don't like to hear this, of course, but from the direct side, generally when they sell service to a customer, they contact that customer if they're interested in the sale, the customer doesn't hear from them a lot. Sometimes they don't hear from them at all. So that's the difference that we provide, is keeping in contact with our clients, making sure that their needs are being met. We're watching their billing, we're watching what you know, services are doing from various carriers, and we're keep, keeping them informed of that. And they really appreciate that. So they see that as a huge value. So I would just, that's, that's again, another really big key within our business model. We'll open up for Q&A. Uh, you don't find that by calling them all the time, you're just getting more and more action items to do throughout your day. <laughs> you know, actually, yes, you do, but a lot of those action items are action items that are going to grow your business. They might, they might be additional sites that you never knew anything about, or additional services. Maybe you have data services with a client, and that client has voice services as well. Well, guess what? If they decide they really like you and you're providing better support than this carrier over here that they didn't talk to you about earlier. They're going to say, hey, Paul, we have this site here, or hey, uh, at this site that we have your data services, let's talk about voice services. Uh, I have one follow-up question for Lori. Um, in my part of the situation that I have personally, give up when my wife that make these calls to you that you don't know anything about telecom, but there, but again, you're calling on behalf of a customer to a knock, and you're, you're interfacing with that, saying the line's down, here's the situation. You know, is there anything special that you know? <laughs> 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 Those yeah. calls and that kind of follow. Yeah, no. How'd you get to that point? Uh, you know, if the circuit goes down, I call into the carrier on behalf of the customer, and I let them know that it's down, and I give them their contact information. And a lot of times, the carrier turns around and calls right back to my customer, but my customer doesn't have to sit on that telephone for 20 minutes, right. which they need to do. So I'm just, I'm just bridging the gap for them. Is all I'm doing. So, but no, I, I don't have any technology. Let me follow up on that. One of the key things that I always say to a customer, they are in business to focus on their core competencies. Your core competency is the telecom data com arena. And that's the value that you add there. If, if you can help them in that arena where they don't have to, you know, call an XYZ carrier, wait on hold to talk to somebody to actually fix a circuit issue or, or, or a billing issue, whatever the issue is, generally they really appreciate that because now they're not wasting their time doing that. The customer, it's refreshing not to hear the salesperson because a lot of people put up their defenses when the person who signed them the, the contract is calling, and of course, to sell them again, uh, depending on whether they see you as a consultant or a salesperson. And hearing her voice uh, is different. It's customer management, it's customer relationship. And, uh, if, if, if you need to, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, Tim, Tim is very consultative in, in his approach, he's very good with his customers.